Welcome back, everybody. Sports Federation TV, as you know, what a fantastic interview that was with Kurt Herzog. So much passion. It's what we need from sports administrators, and the kids that he coaches must be absolutely thrilled. Well, as you heard, he takes them out of the spur, so they, they must be happy. Folks, we've got some great uh, interviews still coming up. We're going to speak to folks from, um, from Shore Angling in a sec, and a little bit later in the show, we'll speak to Richard Buckley. He's the chairperson of the Cape Town Sports Council, and of course, on Wednesday night, the Cape Town Sports Council had their annual awards, which is more merit awards for the, for the 2016 period, but some great accolades handed out, and we'll take a look at some of the pictures and uh, from the evening. So that, that's that, that's going to be great fun. Um, sure, angling. With me now is uh, Bren van Rienen, of course, the South African team ladies manager. Bren, welcome to Federation TV. Thanks, JP. Nice to be here. And Kabos Lowe, South African team player, athlete, angler. <laughs> Thanks, JP. Is only seeing about what are you? What are you? Athlete, a player, a fisher, a fisherman, I'm an fisher lady, an angler. An angler. All right, we've got to get yes. the terminology right. Uh, Brent, just uh, tell us a little bit about the difference between shore angling, deep sea angling, light tackle boat fishing, angling, and all that. Yeah, some one of the biggest differences is that we can cast. Our guys can cast really far. Yeah. They don't need to cast. Deep sea is more offshore, light tackle boat closer inshore, we fish from shore. Okay, all right. Uh, Kabos, uh, let's go to you now. I see you got all your badges and your protea colors and everything like that. Uh, how did you get involved in the world of fishing? Oh, well, when I was little, I enjoyed fishing with my dad, my family, and it became a passion for me. And later on, I decided I want to take it a bit more to the professional level. Yeah. And I decided to join the um, shore angling clubs in the Western Cape, and I started off with Tigerberg um, Club. And from there on, just boom for me. <laughs> what are your favorite spots on, on First of Fun? Okay, I love Strays Bay. My dad has a house that side, so I go there often. Yeah, but yeah. I adore Hentis Bay in Namibia. That's the place I love to be every year. And then we do a lot of fishing in Makassar Strand. But yeah, it, it's not always that easy fishing this side. Yeah. Why is that? Why is it? Oh, it's difficult areas in Makassar, Strand areas. It's very difficult. You've got to be a lot of a safety. And, and it's safety-wise. Oh, oh. yeah. So when you're fishing, what, what fish is popular in False Bay? Uh, okay, Kabul Yo or what? Yeah, tot, def or? Definitely cop, definitely yeah. cop. But um, as our sport goes about kilograms, so we go for the sharks. So usually go out for the bronzies. Really? Yeah, so yeah. That is, is, it, is, it catch and, Brent, is it catch is it catch and release? Do you have to... The whole... The whole conservation thing has taken old inshore angling and fish don't get weighed anymore to get measured. Okay. Uh, quick in, quick out, catch and release, 100%. Yeah. So what is it makes, other than the weight, I mean, what makes a good angler? Uh, a couple of things. Dedication, number one. Uh, time on next to the water. People don't think it, but you have to practice to be a good angler. You need mm. to be able to read water and read conditions. And then distance. Distance does play a factor when you're fishing. Distance in casting. Distance in the casting. So when you're talking about reading the water, um, is there a reason for that? A certain fish yeah. like to be in a certain area at a certain time? and Most definitely. Uh, pushing tide, dropping tides, you need to know where rips are, where banks are. Yeah. Your sandies and blue race fish typically, or they feed typically on the banks, whereas your other fish fish uh, feed the channels, hunting them. Uh, clean water, fish hide in clean water because they get eaten and get seen easier. Look for color in the water, look where the breaks are with the rip graining. So yeah, there's a couple of technical things and especially when you're wading, also need to be able to identify holes and, and rips. Now you're the team manager. Um, yeah. How does it work from, because obviously as an, you're fish as an individual. Uh, yes. How does a team structure work? Team structure with the women is quite interesting. It's like being married to six women for seven days, all, <laughs> of, all different. But yeah, it's manager don't do don't do a lot of fishing then. Yeah, yeah. He looks after logistics, looks that they're happy. Yeah. Source the clothing, the flights. All they need to do is pitch up and fish. And when you compete, uh, uh, is it then a question of the teams added allocated full some weight or? Yeah. Uh, the international that we're going to fish in Namibia now is based on weight. Yeah. It's a team sport. Plus, you get individual accolades as well. So the team gets gold or silver or whatever yeah. based on the weight they catch and then individual as well in that now oh, you guys you guys travel around quite a lot um uh where are the big spots in south africa where where are the the sort of the places where everybody wants to go fish the nice spots in south africa straight by is definitely 
one of the top lists. Yeah. Jeffries Bay, PE region, Van der Rietz, a little bit up in the border region, Bicha and those areas. Yeah. Uh, competitive angling Zululand, then Tunzini Banks, and then social fishing, most probably the Transkai. Transkai. You go there awesome for fishing. Like a jewel there, uh, Kabos. I've never been to Transkai. I heard about it. I would like to go that side one day. At this stage, whenever I can, Namibia empties by. <laughs> so, Kabos, tell us a little bit about your preparation in terms of fishing. I mean, uh, you know, let's say, for example, you're going to go fishing on a Saturday. It's fishing day. How do you get ready or for, for, for the day? Your equipment, uh, bait, or whatever you do. Okay, first you have to think about the area you're going to fish in. So you need to have certain traces for the specific area that you're going to go to. And then you must also think about what target species you're going to get. Um, so you're going to use steel for, obviously, for the bronzes. You need to have bigger hooks for some sort of fish like the diamonds, if there's yeah. flat fish. Um, then you also need to have cop traces, sandy traces, and so we can go on. So for each different species, there's a different kind of trace that you use. So right, right. you do need to pack in quite a lot of stuff. And then most important is you need to have the perfect bait. And yeah, luckily for us, we're in a perfect situation. We have a person that um, allocate the bait to us before, procure the bait for us. And um, it's always fresh, fresh. Um, folks, we've got a nice little picture here, Bryn. Um, th this is a picture here of your SA Ladies Zone 6 team. Just talk us through this, this picture. Where was this taken and who's in there? Uh, this picture was taken in Namibia couple of years ago uh so one of your um, yeah the, the, lady still the one with the with the rod okay and then she we're going to another a massive picture bronzy there at the the team world champs there's also another action shot yeah there's a yeah that was at the world championships a couple of years ago uh the south african men and ladies all together in one in one block there so what's next for you guys and what's next on the cards for 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 Team South Africa ladies? Next is the FIPS M trials that's going to happen in Langebon in about a month's time. Okay. Uh, where they're going to fish specifically for the World Championships. A totally yeah. different type of fishing. We fish multipliers, thick lines, big hooks. That side they fish small yeah. fish. I think fish of 150, of 150 millimeters count there. It's totally different from where we're fishing. Um, Kabos that's here with me and Cristal that's going to join us later both won medals at the World Champs yeah. and they use small worms for bait the hooks you need a microscope to see 150 millimeters only about 15, 15 centimeters, centimeters yeah. about that big it's a totally different it's type of fishing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> alright Kabos we're going to say goodbye to you um, thanks for joining us on Federation TV best of luck for, for the endeavors and the way forward and, and make us proud thanks a lot I appreciate it Right, folks, so when we come back uh, from the break, we're going to be joined by Christelle Wurstazen, also one of the South African uh, ladies' team anglers. Back in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. Sports Federation TV. Right now, we're talking to the folks from uh, Shaw Angling. Fascinating conversations off, um, um, off air, so to speak, during the ad break. Um, but uh, joining us now is uh, Christel Oosthuizen. Christel, uh, welkom by Sport Federatie Televisie. Baie dankie. Jy het gedink, gaan met jou Engels gesels, ne? <laughs> jy was een beetje bekommerd daar, ne? <laughs> Luister, welkom by die show. Um, ek sien jy, jy het al die part van, het jy nou deurgeraai van die, van die Cape Wildlands af? Ja, van Bonneville af. Al die part van Bonneville. So is jy en, en, en Kabous van die selle, Selle area? Nee, sy is van die perl. Ek oh. is nog so oor die 100 kilo's van daar af. Oh, ok, Bonnie wel is bykie ver. Ja. So jy het deurgerei nou net vir die vir die televisie. Ek is dan ver gerei vandag vir die televisie show. Ja. <laughs> Vertel ons bykie van jou visvang loopbaan so ver. Ja, ek het van kleins af visvang. Ek het 2009 kompeterend begin hengel. En 2011 is ek eerste keer in die Protea span opgeneem. En nog elke jaar is ek in die Protea span. So ek is die eerste vrou wat nou 7 jaar achter mekaar in die span is. Nee, maar ek, wacht nou, dit, kom ons gaan bykie terug, hoe het jy, hoe het jy betrok geraak met vis? Het jou pa jou uitgesteld? Ja, of jou, my pa. Dit is altyd die pa, wat, ja. dit is maar hoe het begin. Ne? Ja, nee, ek het van kleins af vis gevang en toe het hy vir gevraag, stel ek jy belang om kompeterend saam met hulle te heen. Ja, ja. En dit is maar waar dit begin het. En uh, nou, ons het vroeg vir, vir Kabousel gevraag, waar is hulle, hulle vijfde vis, visvangplekke, en sy het gesê, die henties baie, en, en, en struis baie, waar is jou, waar is jou spot? Ek sal dan sê, struis baie, en henties baie. Ook. <laughs> <laughs> ja. Brent, let's go back to you now. Um, 
tell us a little bit more about the management in terms of, of, of the ladies' team, but also uh, we're, we're curious to know how do ladies get involved if they want to start fishing? Because, uh, you know, the development of women and girls' sport in South Africa is very important. And you're, you're in, the, in the hot seat, so to speak. Yeah, development is, is primary to the sporting car to get anglers in. We've got a, in the Western Cape, we've got a nice thing called the school's mini league. Yeah. Where we promote angling from under eight to senior ladies that has not been fishing competitively. Um, there's four competitions running on the West Coast, typically where they fish for small sand sharks. Um, get used to the angling, get used to bait, get used to casting. Yeah. And quite sure to say that through that program, Cabos was one of the products there. She fished the mini league a couple of times. And we've had one guy now fishing for the the protein on the 16th side, yeah. but also came through the junior angling ranks. Christel, wie is voor jou die, 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 ek sien, as ons net kyk hier so'n bykie na jou rekord, um, jy het begin visvang in die droste en die boel in 2009, 2012 het jy die Suid-Afrikaanse kampioenskappe gewen, toe was jy die nationale dameskampioen vir uh, nummer 1 vir 3 jare, as ek recht so ver, ja. en, um, en die lys gaan aan en aan en aan, van waar jy gekompeteer het, en al jou verskillende medailles, en, en sovoorts, en ek kan sien dat jou, jou baie is vol, vol um, badges daar, so natuurlijk van, van verskillende competities, en toere wat jylle gedoen het, maar wanneer jy nou vis vang, wie is die, wie is die moeilikste, die tafste competitie daar buiten? Wat een land, of wat een dame is het? Dit is, dit is, alles is competerend, maar die beste van ons, allemaal is vriende, um, so ja, dit is competerend, maar ek sal nie sê, daar, daar is competitie, Kabous is goed, Elzaan is goed, ja, ja. LCB is goed, allemaal wat ek nou uitgelost het, maar hulle weet het, maar die belangrijkste op die oude is ons allemaal vrienden, en dit maak die sport nog meer. Ek wil ons stel, jylle, jylle competitie is meer met die ding wat in die water is, ja. om hem uit te kry. Ja. Nou hoe, wanneer jy een groot vis vang, en ons, kom ons kyk graag na hierdie foto's, vis, we got a nice picture here, is dit jy hier so, Christel? Ja. Nou, what's going on here? Vertel ons bykie wat gaan hier aan. Dit was 15 minuten voor Lions Up in Namibia, toe daar die vis my gegryd, en ek was een uur en een driekwart aan met hom, en ek was net gedaan. Maar hy het nie vir jou gehap nie, ne? Nee. Jy hy het uit die lijn gegryd? <laughs> ja. Oké, okay, want daar so lyk het amper as jy met die, met die perd stoei. Ja, nee, maar dit was een stoei en half. Ja, hoe lang het jy om uh, gevat om in te trek? Een uur en een driekwart. Een uur en driekwart. Is, wat is die gemiddelde tyd om een om vis in te brand? Dit hang af van die grootte en wat sy type vis dit is. Ja, ja. Bronsie is, is een sterk vis. Het was daar een bronsie, een ja. bronze whaler. Ja. Ja. Nee, dit is een sterk vis. Nou, jy krij die, die regge toe, of hy is baie keer groter, maar hy is baie makkelijker om uit te bring. Ja, en ja. En noem dit een bag. Nou, is dit die gevaarlik, hak. <laughs> is dit die gevaarlik um, om, 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 ek my, uh, Bren is my gaan sê, jylle, jylle, oh, en, 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 um, kabous ook, dat jylle, Julle soek eindelijk die, die haai, hulle, omdat hulle meer weeg en hulle is bykie langer en so, is dit nie gevaarlik nie? Dit is gevaarlik, maar jy moet weet, wat, jy moet nie diep in die water gaan nie, maar dan gaan hy vir jou buit, so jy moet weet hoe om te hanteer. So. En die peilsterkte ook, hy kan jou lelik seer, maar wat jy dadelijk moet dokter doen. Die peilsterkte is, nou, is, nou, is nie blue point is nie, wat, wat noem jy? Nee, het is stingray. Ah, uh, ok, stingrays, yeah, yeah, that yeah. must be quite dangerous, I mean, I've seen divers get stuck by, stung by the, 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 the stingrays, or hit by the stingrays yeah, tail, yeah. And, and, and cut them badly. Now some of those, like the blue rays and your black stingrays, got a sharp edge on yeah. them, like a, call it an angle. Yes, yeah, yeah. And they hit you with that, and they stick it into you. I've got, really actually bad. had a couple of friends being stung by some of them. Yeah. One went actually through one of the, the guy's calf. Yeah. In, in one side, out. So do you as a team manager have to look at safety aspects as well? And yeah, obviously you have to look at safety aspects. Um, you manage a bunch of athletes and they're basically in your hands, although they all know the sea. Hopefully all of them can swim as well. Yeah. <laughs> it tends to help. Is that also, that's also a concern because they have to wade. Yeah. Um, sometimes you even have to swim to banks. Um, really? Jeffrey's Bay, Yentis Bay, there are certain banks that you need to reach in order to catch fish, which might be 100 to 200 meters from shore. Yeah. You wait about 100 or 80 meters and you have to swim another 50 to get onto the bank. So, I think it's just ladies, a bunch of tough girls. <laughs> so, Christel, what's was the toughest, the moeilijkste the place that you've got to catch fish? And what you think is that a, a challenge? Uh, this must be in Biga. 
in Oostlande. Ja, en hoe kom? Die water was baie rof wees en ons voor op die banke gaan staan het en op King's Ledge. Jy daar gestaan tot die water jou weggejaag het. Basis afgeslaan het van die klip af. Ja, ja. Maar dit is maar oor ons stap, want anders jy moet diep swem. Want anders jy daar achter voor op die banke is en jy het een goed vis aan, dan is jy om aan het met jy, moet jy met die vis buiten te swem. Oké. Okay. Yeah. Bryn, we're going to leave it at that. Um, Bryn van Renan, uh, ladies team manager, thanks for joining us on Sports Federation TV. Uh, I know this ladies had to drive a long way today, yeah. uh, but hopefully this kind of TV exposure uh, gets you guys on the map even more than you are already and possibly brings in a few sponsors if you can hook them. Yeah, thanks for your time, JP. Appreciate it. And Christelle, for you, all the people from Bonneville, or what you have done, you have to go far to om hier zo met de omstel te komen gezels en en ja best of luck voor die voor die toekomst. Bye, dank je voor die gelegenheid. There we go. Right, folks, uh, Sports Federation TV. When we come back after the break, um, Richard Bucky is the chairperson of the Cape Town Sports Council. He's going to be telling us about the Cape Town Sports Awards that happened at the Civic Centre here in Cape Town on Wednesday night. There were some fantastic awards and amazing athletes, from um, Olympic athletes to Paralympic athletes, and uh, um, including some. Awards such as technical excellence and uh, lifetime achievers, really a fantastic occasion for the athletes out there to be uh, of young and old to be recognised for their their uh, contribution to the world of sport and of course their performance in the world of sport. We'll be back after the break. <laughs>